Welcome to another episode of Chillin' with Adam. So who is Adam? Adam Hamill is my 27-year-old son who transitioned in January 2011 as a result of injuries sustained in a car accident. Adam began communicating with me while his body was still on life support and he has not yet stopped. Good morning, Adam. He's with us today. He's saying, good morning, Mama. I love you so much. And I'm sorry you're having a bad morning. <laughs> well, let's just say um, it wasn't a bad morning. It was kind of a juggling act where I had to juggle, like, say, 24 knives. Other than that. <laughs> He's saying, you, you handled it with grace. <laughs> I just put on some smooth jazz and tried to keep my blood pressure low. <laughs> so now that I'm nice and grounded and chill. Let's greet our guest. I'm so excited today to say hello to Mr. Gene Kelly. <laughs> He's saying hello, beautiful. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, oh gosh, it's my pleasure. God, he's gorgeous, isn't he? Oh. I don't even know, honestly. I, 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 adore, him. I adore him. I adore him. He's I just love the way he dances. <laughs> oh, I love I the way he dance dances her. too. I can barely even remember what he looks like. I remember a dark haired fellow with exuberant energy. He just has the most amazing blue, kind of blue greenish eyes. And, and, and um, he's got this great, honest smile, you know, he Aww. just looks, um, he looks perfect uh, in a very imperfect way. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a big scar on his cheek, uh, but he really, I mean, he just, yeah, he just has to smile at me and I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't get this a lot. I don't get a lot of giggles about men, but um, I, I, I was a dancer for, for 20 years. I did ballet for 18 years and I did street dance and competition for two years and, and God, you know, every time I saw him dance, I was like, oh, my God, I want to dance like him. I was so jealous. <laughs> I had no idea you were a dancer. Well, no wonder you're so smitten with Mr. Kelly. I know. I have a thing for him. Although I don't know much about his privacy life. I really, <laughs> I just liked uh, Singing in the Rain is one of my favorite movies. It's just, it just is. And, you know, it's just the way that he dances. There is something... He's just blushing right now. He's kind of like, you're making me blush. Sorry. <laughs> Adam was very taken with him, and he was very impressed with the fact that he did that scene in Singing in the Rain while he wasn't feeling well. And he said Gene had so many stories to share with us. So, Gene, you have the floor. He's going, okay, well, what, what do you want me to say? I um, want you to say what you want to say. Tell us about that day that you filmed Singing in the Rain. Well, you know, it was an incredible scene and people adore that scene still today. You know, it's being used as an example in new dances. So um, I'm, I'm grateful, he says, that it, it, it really impacted the world the way that it did. But for me, it was a very exhausting, very difficult day because I had been ill. Um, I, I had extremely high fever, and but we needed to take the scene. And, you know, in those days, you, whether you were sick or not, if you're a professional, you come up and you perform. That's just how it was. So I, I, I did that whole scene in one take because I needed to get it done and go home. <laughs> And so um, there was a lot of improvising in the scene. Um, there was, um, you know, there was a thing. I love using props. He says, I loved using everyday items um, and, and really integrated into a dance. Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 you know, that's a thing I would love to share or, or, um, help people with who are professional dancers is, um, you know, it's not all about the techniques, but it's about making your own style. It's about creating something that's solely you. And I would like to um, believe that 
in some way or form, I did um, change dance in America. I did, uh, I took it away from the very strict ballroom, um, very um, ruled, you know, there's so many rules and regulations in certain dances, you know, you got to stretch this and do that and stand up and do this. There's so many restrictions in dance uh, at that time. And I basically um, combined different kinds of, of um, dancing and just made it into a really nice blend. Um, and, and so I, I really think that I helped and changed the dance that was was being shown in film. Um, but really, I believe that I created a typical American style of dance for the world. Uh, because when you look at, when I look, he says, when you look, but when I look as well, because I keep track of everyone. Okay. But when I look, because I help dancers, that's what I do now. I help dancers and I help singers to find their own identity in the dance. Oh, um, okay. Which is something that's really important. You know, it's not just about learning the routine and, and imitating it, right. but it's about learning the routine. And trust me, that takes a lot of hard work. That takes a lot of effort. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, you're an athlete, you know. Oh, absolutely. It, constant, constant training, training, training. So it's not just about learning the routine, but it's really about um, flourishing it with your own personal energy. And that's what's important in a dance. You know, anybody can imitate another person, mm -hmm. but it's how you bring it. It's how you put your energy into the dance that makes the dance alive. And, you know, dancing, it is so important um, in people's lives, uh, a lot more than they really think uh, it is. <laughs> um, I know for me, um, you know, I didn't really want to be a dancer. Um, he says, <laughs> it was an easy way to get money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He says, um, so my mom had signed me up into dancing classes because, you know, in those days, yeah. in order to get close to a woman, okay. you know, you needed to, you know, the best way to do that was to invite them over for a dance. That was, uh, in my day, a little bit like courtship, you know, uh -huh. a good the women always fell for the great dancers. That's how it was in those days. Mm -hmm. So. As a child, I was uh, introduced to dancing uh, by my mom putting us in um, dancing school. And then me and my brother wanted to make some cash. And so the best way to do that was, was to perform on the streets, you oh. know, to do dances and, and see how much money we could collect. That's how it all started. Um, me and Fred, um, Fred's my brother. He says, uh, me and Fred were always you know, teaming up together, making these dances. So in a way, from a very early age, we were already making choreographies. We were, you know, inventing dances. Uh, my brother Fred taught me how to tap dance. And, um, you know, we were very similar, very similar in some way. Um, our dance was very similar. Um, we always got along. We always got along. Um, and uh, I always relied on him as well. If I ever got stuck in in a dance that wasn't working or, you know, something wasn't quite right, I would ask for his, his advice and so on. So we always kept real, we were always real close. Um, but that's how it started for me. But, you know, dance is it's 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 like a celebration of life he says you know yes. it really helps people to be expressive and and you know it's also a great way to just exercise to stay fit and it that sure is, is. Uh, yeah. very uh, rigorously you know i was very proud of my body i was very uh, i was not ashamed to show it off um, that's why i always wore very tight clothing instead of the suits <laughs> that oh, most okay I, wore the tight clothing because I was really proud of uh, what how my body looked like and you know that's not ego um, it was just um, self-love it was about um, showing what you have and, and using it into your dance I wanted to show people that every muscle in my body was being used while I was dancing um, 
but you know, dance, you know, and I really want to want to go a little bit deeper in dance and singing, how important it is in people's lives, because, you know, dance, it can really give you a style. It, it gives you uh, a sophistication. It, it's also a challenge because it is really hard to get to that point where it becomes uh, your natural state of being. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of training. It takes a lot of persistence. Um, but, you know, w one thing that people don't know or might not know is that it's actually really good for your brain as well. It's really good for, for the health of the brain and it really prevents uh, diseases like um, like dementia and, and Alzheimer's. Uh, and so that's why you see a lot now in a lot of um, <clears throat> um, care homes for elder people that they'll teach them how to dance, you know, because it helps oh. the brain. Um, it helps the brain to, um, to it, it like stimulates uh, the growth of new cells because okay. you have to think about what you're doing. You have to find a pattern. You have to find a, mm -hmm. an energy um, sway with it. You know, there's so much in the brain that is being used while we're dancing that it's basically it's like gymnastics for the brain because you need to coordinate your your movements you know you need to um one step forward with this foot one step back with that foot you know it takes coordination in the brain right. to make dance complete so really i think a lot of people um who are worried about you know will i ever get alzheimer's because sometimes it is in the family you know uh, or people who do have alzheimer's get them to dance get them into ballroom dancing or latin dancing or whatever it is because it will help them to reproduce uh, new cells in the brain and to make new connections and to keep the other cells active um so i just wanted to, to throw that out there that, that dancing is not just good um you know for your muscles and you know mm -hmm. build up all that but it's really really good for the brain and that's why i think for me i stayed really healthy um in the mind for for a very long time until the day i died i mean um you know i was um very healthy i was how I was old were you when you passed <laughs> he's going should we go there well, you were talking about how long your brain was healthy. I, I mean, I'd be more impressed if you were 91 than if you were 61. Um, he's, he's, he's giving me the eight number. So I think he was either in, in his, his 80s, 80s. Or somewhere over there. Okay. All um, right. He's just going on. <laughs> he's like, I don't like age numbers. You know what? <laughs> Just between you and me, I don't either. I can't even say the number I am right now. The last time somebody asked me how old I was at the doctor, I spoke in computer terms. I used like the number dot in the other. <laughs> he says, no, it was just a thing of me. It was a, it's a thing of me. He says, I don't like um, putting an age on a person because we never age. Our bodies age. But exactly. We don't age. I mean, I was 72 when I married a 23-year-old, okay? Age does not matter. He's going, I knew you were going to do that. Put that mouth back. <laughs> he says, yes, my third wife was 23 and I was 72 when we got married. So hey, I'm um, not judging. I'm, I'm right there with you saying the number doesn't matter. When people ask me how old I matter. am, doesn't I say... Matter. I'm as I'm the old I am the age I would be if no one had ever told me how old I am. Because he says, you know, age for me was never it it was never something on my mind. It just wasn't. Right. Um the thing that I was really um in a way obsessed with is um gaining knowledge. I loved learning. I was always learning. I was always learning. I, um, he says, I read one book a day. I'm one the book same way. Day. I'm the same way. I love to learn too. He says, it is, it's, 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 it's really important for people to never, ever stop learning. You know, the, the, 
there's so much benefit from this. I mean, just to give you an idea on, on what I could do, you know, I could speak Italian fluently, French fluently. Uh, I was learning to speak Spanish. Um, I had an, I was a math, um, he studied in economics, he says, okay. and he was really interested in history and politics. Um, you know, and, and he's saying, I learned Latin. <laughs> I could speak Latin. Uh, there, there was always something that I wanted to learn. There's always something that uh, I wanted to fill my mind with as much uh, understanding and information and insight as I possibly could because you know learning teaching yourself things um, in a way it's 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 almost like self-improvement oh it is you know? yeah you become a master of your own mind yes. he says you know and, and there's really Hold on, go back. Okay, he says, okay, so when we, you know, when we stop to better ourselves, mm -hmm. right? And when we stop to learn new things, in a way, we're kind of giving up on, on, on reaching for new goals. We're giving up on, mm -hmm. um, we're settling. We're, we're kind of, okay. You know, this is it and, and that's it. But he says, when you have a goal to go to, let's say, okay, my new goal is I'm learning French. Whatever it is, it okay. gives you it gives you something to look forward to. Absolutely. Then what, when you get there, when you achieve it, you're going to be so proud of you, you know, and it's going to give you a boost of, of really self-improvement. It really will. And he's saying, you know, uh, um, a lot of times we learn so much in school, but, you know, we never use it. And the, and it's true. You don't use it. You know, you lose it. Uh, so it, it's really, um, it's almost like exercising your body and your brain to, um, to stay connected to everything that goes on in your, in your world, to really understand the ins and outs of everything. Uh, and, it, you know, it just gives you a confidence boost. It really does. It gives you a confidence boost that you achieved something on your own and, you know, you could do something that not everyone can. You know, it gave me a confident boost as well, but it also gave me a sense of accomplishment of, hey, another thing that I, I know what, how to do, you know, and, and it always, always gives you a goal, something to look forward to, and it keeps your mind busy. It keeps, when we continue to train our brain to do, um, he says, to, to <laughs> dissect, I don't know why he's using that word, to dissect information, because that's what studying is all about. You have to right. kind of dissect. It, figure it out, uh, memorize it, and then go from there and practice. You know, it, it is just such a great tool to keep yourself motivated in life and to really keep your brain healthy. Uh, because I think a lot of people stop using their brain. They go on autopilot, and there's no more new information being processed, um, or not a lot. Uh, and so the brain becomes lazy. And brain cells start, uh, you know, uh, breaking down. They start dying off, um, but they're not being renewed. And you know, another way you can do that is 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 just doing puzzles or anything like that. People who love word puzzles, it keeps your brain busy. It keeps you thinking. So um, it's good for your health. It brings you happiness. It gives you confidence. Um, in 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 you get into a self-improvement mode and because you are learning new things, it also broadens your perspective on the rest of the world. Um, because learning, I loved learning languages because you really kind of got also into the history of the language, into the people who speak it every day, into the culture, you know, you, you really get a broader view of what is going on around you, how other people see the world, how they experience it and what their customs are and what their habits are. You know, it, it, it's just so enlightening, he says. So, so if there's a, another, you know, never stop dancing, 
never stop singing, and never stop learning. Those are the three biggest lessons that I learned in my life and that I wish to pass, pass on to everyone because, you know, singing, I never thought I would be singing. <laughs> I always thought, okay, I'm good at dancing. We'll stick at that. Mm -hmm. You know, I would teach people. I would teach kids even um, before I did Hollywood. Um, so dancing was really something that um, I felt good about. It made me um, healthy. It made me fit. Um, and the ladies adored it. So, you know, you can't go wrong with that. Um, and he says, for all the men out there, ladies still love it when you can dance. Okay, that hasn't changed. Other things might have changed, but when you can take a lady to dance and impress her that way, you're good to go. <laughs> I'm going to agree with that. <laughs> I love dancing too, so I love it. Me too. Uh, but he's saying, you know, singing, singing, I mean, he's going, wow, it is a, an expression of this high frequency, this high energy, um, and anybody can, can can testify that when you sing, you instantly feel better. You instantly feel happier. Even when you're singing a sad song because your boyfriend left you, we're going to sing this sad song. And we instantly feel a little bit better because we feel like somebody understands what we're going through. It is healing. That's and people, true. we need to sing so much more. And it's so, I feel a little sad that the musical era has faded away. There's still a few musicals here and there, but not the way that they were in, in our days. Right. Um, you know, we use our voice and, and, and it's, her voice is really just an expression of, of feelings, right? But mm -hmm. singing, it really teaches us um, patterns. It teaches us a pulse. It teaches us to rhyme and structure. And, 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 and <laughs> he's saying it teaches human beings to bond and to express our emotions. Okay, so um, singing does, it, it gives us pleasure and it really encourages the imagination and the storytelling because songs is about what we're going through, what we're mm -hmm. all feeling. And so in that way, it really connects, it reconnects people with this one song and it reconnects um, the energy that we are connected and that we are going through the similar things. And that, you know, there is, even if you can, even if you feel like you're completely and utterly alone, when you put on some music, um, you will relate to that song in some way. You will connect energetically to the person who is singing it and you'll instantly feel not alone. You'll instantly feel, hey, there is somebody out there who knows what I'm talking about. And, you know, a lot of times, and I think um, people forget about this, but when we sing, it is, um, it's, it's, it reduces the stress in our bodies. It really does. It's almost like singing, it's kind of like an, <laughs> he's going an aerobic exercise. I don't even know if aerobic, if they still do that, but okay. Aerobic, uh, yes. Well, aerobic. you know, aerobic has to do with moving air. And that has got to be another reason that singing is good for you because you have to breathe deep into your diaphragm. He says, yeah, it improves the efficiency of the cardiovascular system. Yeah. Says. And it increases the oxygenation of the blood and then it proves, it really improves your alertness. So, mm -hmm. um, because of that, you know, you, you're, you're getting more oxygen into the cells w where your body will feel better. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the stress will be basically, you, you're singing the stress out. That energy yeah. will be completely gone, you know, and, and it just really improves your general health. So, you know, you're just, he's saying we're improving our airflow in the upper respiratory tract. And, and, and that can also prevent you from getting colds or flus you know it just helps you with your immune system it gives your system a boost 
And, you know, so everybody should be singing, you know, in the car, in the shower, wherever you can. You sing your heart out. You put some music on and you use that tool to really um, be in the moment at that moment, you know, to really just be you and the song and, and what it means to you um, and just um, really increase your body's health by <laughs> because you really... <laughs> Singing, you need a lot of breathing technique to do it. Right. And so we go really deep and we go, we blow it all out. So it's almost like meditating. You know, you just kind of have these breathing exercises while you're singing. Yeah. So, uh, and he says, if you can just add some dancing to it, I mean, you know, people have proven you can lose weight just by dancing, having fun, you know? So why not do it? So, um, my message to everyone is, and I hope that, you know, in the classroom, because, you know, when I look at schools now, mm -hmm. it's all about, you know, here's some music, now sit still and listen. Right. You know, I mean, it's, an, I, I would not be, it wouldn't even be possible for me to put music on and sit still. I mean, it's just, it's not logical to it me. Isn't. Why would you tell a child to sit still in a classroom while you have to listen to some music? I mean, can you imagine? Oh, my God, I hear music, but I can't react to it. Oh, my God. It's impossible to not react to music. Something needs to move. It's the energy that takes your whole body into a different dimension. And, it, you know, it, it, you have to move people. So uh, I really hope that they will. Um, and if they, you know, if they don't have a lot of, uh, singing or dancing classes in school see if there's anything the kids can do outside of school right you know because it will really improve their health it will really improve their um their stability within themselves because they will have they will know what um hard work is they will know what discipline is. They will know what it feels like to accomplish something. It will boost their, you know, their self-confidence. There are so many good qualities for children to really push them into a direction of singing or dancing or anything like that. So um, stimulate it within your children. Dance yourself. Go crazy. Whenever you're having a bad day, that dancing was my savior. Oh, yeah. I would music on that I loved and I would just go all out you know and I did it as a profession but you know what it never got old and it never got boring and it was always a challenge and it was always hard work but I loved every minute of it and I loved performing with all these other dancers and singers who were so incredible you know a lot of people ask me you know who was my favorite dancer to dance with you know I am you know I always tell people you know it was Jerry DeMouse because <laughs> every lady that I ever danced with was so incredible in their own unique way it would be impossible for me to pick any dancer out um, because I just adored all of them and so we'll stick with Jerry. <laughs> did, did you say Jerry the mouse? Jerry the mouse. <laughs> what is that? So I, he's like, you don't know who Jerry the mouse is? Tommy. I know who Mickey the mouse is. <laughs> he's like, have you ever heard of Tom and Jerry? Oh gosh, yes. I know Jerry. I'm sorry. I just didn't, I forgot his last name was the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was a mouse. I don't think he had a last name. That's just what I call him. Uh, okay, I, let's say his name was Jerry the Mouse. So Mouse is his last name. <laughs> He's like, you know, he, he was easy to dance with because he wasn't really there. <laughs> no kidding. So he must have done a dance. There must be something where they showed Gene dancing with Jerry the Mouse. Is that true? He says, yes, oh, there's okay. a movie where I'm dancing with Jerry. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to look for that because that sounds really cute. He says, go for it because it was a lot of fun to do. And, you know, I'm really proud of that because I was an innovator at that time. I was, uh, yeah. it was something that had never been done before. Um, and, I, you know, I wasn't just a dancer and an actor. I was also a choreographer and I was a producer and I was a director and, you know, I did so many things. I couldn't stand still. I needed to, 
renewal, renewal, renewal. And, and I think that, you know, there are a lot of things that I did in, um, in my movies um, that were different, that were first time deals and, and people just build it upon that. And I think that's great that, you know, I could be an example or I could be um, kind of a renewer of, of, of movies. That's what I did. You know, I did bring movies to a new kind of an, into a new era. Um, and I think, um, and that's not ego. He says, you know, it's just, part of my achievements that I'm very proud of. What was your soul contract, Jean, in that lifetime? You sure had a blast. I did have a blast, but it was all about discipline. It was all about self-discipline and it was about hard work. Um, When it came to um, my legacy or whatever I was here to teach others, Let's just say that I needed to adjust certain things into the movie business. Um, and, you know, there were people out there who thought that I was, um, that I was controlling and that I was um, very perfectionistic. But I don't know any artist who isn't perfectionistic of what they're doing, of their art. You know, you need to have a little bit of that uh, in order to push yourself Mm -hmm. to do the best of the best of the best that you can do. Um, So in a way, I'm proud of my perfectionism, (laughs) you know. And uh, was I demanding? I just like things to be perfect. I just like things to be right. Um, And so I I would never... um, Never apologize for that, but you know, I always stayed very humble. I never let the fame get to my head. I always stayed very grounded in my human existence, and I loved what I'm do what I was doing. So that helped me to stay grounded in who I was. You sound like you were a very intelligent man. Would it be fair to say that you had an unusually high IQ? He says, no, that was the case, but also because I trained it to be that way. It's all about having to drive to um, improve yourself, having to drive to understand the world around you. When there was something that I didn't know how it worked or how it was made, I would look it up. You know, I needed to understand. But you Um, had the intellectual capacity that you were able to understand it. So you came in with that there are people that come in in this in this particular incarnation or any particular incarnation where the cerebral capacity just is not there especially for learning languages like you learned them he says that is true and that's usually a contract once we come in uh, in that way however don't inter- underestimate those people it's not because they oh, can't I'm not underestimating or- anybody i'm a special education teacher so let's just say that right now I don't underestimate anybody. I'm just saying that I'm impressed with um, the fact that you seem to have used your brain to its full capacity. You were firing all, on all cylinders. Let's just say that. He's saying yes. And you know what? We all come down here to be the best that we can be. So it's just a choice that you make uh, on who you are, who you want to be, and where you want to go. Mm-hmm. Um and I wanted to give everything that I could to this world uh, and be a part of it, not just be a passenger. I wanted to be a part of it and understand it. I wanted to understand the world and understand other people and other cultures. Um, and, you know, and there's so many things that I still wished I had learned that I didn't have enough time. Um, I really wanted to learn how to play chess. Uh, <laughs> didn't get there um but he says um not to worry i am learning right now (laughs) really wow he's saying you know even now uh we continue to learn we continue to grow um and, and it's just so much fun because understanding yourself and understanding the world um 
will give you the capacity, he says, to find love and understanding in everyone and everything. Because the reason that there's so much conflict is because we don't understand one another. We don't comprehend where we come from. Right. And we don't understand how this world works. So educate yourself. If there is something you don't understand, go look for the answer. Uh, it will not only help you stay healthy, it will not only help you to reach to a very high age where you're still 100% there, um, but it will also give you a feeling of accomplishment in life. So keep learning, people. Keep That's learning. Great Anthony. advice. Great advice. So what was your family life like? Did you marry? Did you have a family? He says, I didn't marry. I married three times, he says. Not one of my greatest accomplishments. Um, but let's just say that everything happened for a reason. Um, I also had children. And I have grandchildren now. Um, so I did have the family life. I did experience it. Um, I can't say that I had a horrible childhood because I didn't. Uh, it was good. It was normal. It was, you know... Um, we let's just say that me and my brother uh, weren't afraid to get ourselves out there and to try new things and see what was going to happen. Um, so I, I don't think I ever um, experienced family life as bad. Um, I loved being a father. I loved being a father. It really brought a lot of fulfillment to me. Um, but you know, I love the women too. What can I say? <laughs> he said, there's nothing wrong with sharing the love with multiple women, right? Well, uh, do you have any stories that you want to share? Adam said you had a whole lot of stories. Well, you know, the, my biggest, um, uh, and I just want to tell her that I, am super proud of her is my last wife uh, because there was such a big age difference um, but we really connected on a soul level she understood me and I understood her and um, we were only married for six years before I passed uh, but they were really incredible years and she didn't even know who I was when she met me. <laughs> She's like, figure that one out. You know, I thought the whole world knew who I was. Apparently not. Um, well, remember Freddie Mercury's husband, his partner, Jim, didn't know who he was either. Yep. And he's saying, you know, so it was really nice to be approached by a, a woman who didn't, uh, you know, it wasn't the name and it wasn't um, the characters that I played that attracted her to me, but it was really just who I was. And, so that's and, incredible because you're, you're basically saying that you were like in your late 70s and she was in her 20s. So I don't care who you are. That is very unusual. That's amazing. Is, and she was attracted to you just for who you were. Exactly. How did and, you and meet? Well, she was actually, uh, she was a writer and um, she had, or they had given her the assignment to do my biography. <laughs> That's okay. How <laughs> That's how we met, he says. So, but she um, didn't know who you were? No, no. They basically put us in a room together and we had to start talking and she was just making notes about who I was and what I did. And, and, you know, that's just how it all started. And we got really close and, you know, it doesn't have to be, um, spectacular when you meet each other, you know, but when you do meet that person that you're meant to share uh, a part of your life with you feel it you know it you, there's yeah. just something inside of you that says oh my god I know this person or I uh, you know it feels like you've met them before um and and that's how it was for us so you know I just think that she's I, I'm very proud of her because 
she really tried to make the book according to what she believed I wanted it to be. And, 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 and I, I do approve, he said. A lot of people didn't approve um, because she also put our uh, history in there and our relationship and people didn't want they didn't want that in the book because it was all about me. But, you know, she was a big part of me. So uh, I'm glad that she stuck with what she believed in uh, and really put it in there. So that's all I wanted to say is that I'm very proud of her and that I love her very much. Um, Did you two have children? No, he said no. Now he says, I had children with my previous wife who had died. We were married until the day she died. Um, he's saying, let's just say that all the women in my life were really incredible. Um, and a lot of men as well. And I don't mean that in a sexual or any kind of relationship, but I mean, as a friendship, you know, there were so many people that uh, I really got along with and that, that I admired. Do you want so, to share anything about any of those? Well, you're saying it's really hard to pick a specific one, but... Um, then don't. He says, I really... Uh, yeah, it's so hard. There's so many, so many, he says. But, you know, I think the most important thing is... Um, He's saying, <laughs> he's saying, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I keep, for some reason, I still keep my private life very, very protected for some reason. And you know I, what? That's absolutely I, okay. It's just, that's how I was. I kept everything very private when it came to that. Um, but he says, you know, the, the most important thing that I really wanted to share today um, was, yeah, you know, I did have, I think I had a great life. I, I'm not going to complain. There were ups and downs. You know, there were things that frustrated me. There were things that brought me down. But that's life. That's life. Yep. But singing and dancing really brought joy to my life. And it really helped me to um, to not get so attached to negativity. Because I would just sing it all out. You know, where would I would dance it all out. Whenever I got frustrated, I would dance the heck out of things. You know, and people loved them. Like, where did that come from? You know, just get it all out. So, you know, that's really uh, the message I want to give give to people is use singing, use dancing, uh, use educating yourself to really find more balance within yourself in this life and, and to really um, use it as, a, as, a, as an excellent, completely free tool to de-stress to bring yourself back to your existence, to find joy, and to share it with others. Because dancing with a partner is the most incredible thing there is because you're connected soul to soul. You're right. sharing energy. And when you dance with a person that you love or that you care about, you know, it, it connects you in such an intensely deep matter that in a way you become one. When you're dancing with your partner, those two energies, they, they really merge together. And in that moment, in that moment, in a human existence, you are no longer two separate entities, but you become one. And that is as close as you can get, you know, in this life to being completely merged energetically. So see the beauty in dancing and dance with your partner. You know, if you want to spice up your relationship, if you want your relationship to be better, if you want to take it out of the everyday routine and the boredness, you know, dance, go follow some dance classes. It'll bring you together. It'll bring you joy. You guys will start to exercise more. You know, it is such a great tool to become happy in your life that I recommend every single person out there go dancing. That's, That's my great advice. advice. You can't dance and be unhappy. It's just not possible, right? There's a reason why there's so many shows now about dancing with the stars mm -hmm. and dancing with this. There's just, you know, and even just looking at a person dancing, you can feel their joy. You can yep. 
feel their passion when they do it. A dance can bring you to tears. It makes you feel, you know, you can look at a dance and really feel the passion, you know, or the hurt, you know, or whatever it is, there's dancing is an expression of every emotion that there is. And when you look at a dance, you know, it can really move you. It can really release some of the energies that have been built up inside of you that you've been holding on that are bad for you. So watch it, do it. Uh, it'll, it made my life uh, perfect in every way. Uh, so I want it to make your life perfect in every way. So go and dance, merge together, and you know, just know that dancing is love. It is an expression of your that's true identity, so and that's what it is. So get out there and dance, people, and send us a message and let us know about the magic you created while you're out there dancing and singing Adam, in the rain. This, this is what Adam is doing. He's like dancing. I wasn't the greatest dancer, but I can do this. <laughs> He was a damn good dancer. He says, not, not when you go into Gene's body and you're like, okay, I'm nothing compared to him. <laughs> He's like, once you get that comparison, you're like, okay, I need more practice. I really did. Yeah, uh, no kidding. That must have been quite an experience. And during our last episode of Chilling with Adam, Adam was talking about how he did the energy swirling thing with Gene. And he got to, you know, see how it felt to be Gene Kelly dancing in that scene. And he was so impressed that he did the scene in one take when he was so sick. Yeah, he's saying, you know, it was it was really incredible to be in his body and, and really experiencing it through his eyes. And he's saying, you know, there was a lot of stress too. Don't, don't, don't let him fool you when he's saying everything was perfect. I felt a lot of stress and a lot of pressure on him to perform, to make it right, to make it perfect. Um, but every time he danced, it was like all that stress would just fade away and he would just become, it's almost like he, 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 he felt like he was in his own little universe and there was nobody there and he just let it all out and let it all go. And it was incredible. Um, you know, and when he danced with a partner, um, it felt like, you know, they, it was a friendship, you know, it, it, when you do things together that are fun, um, it creates a, a friendship and it creates a feeling of being connected to that person in a very special, intimate way. And that's what it felt like. You know, he did have stress and, you know, we all do. It's life, um, you know, and he did have a lot of guesswork uh, on how to bring this forward because there was some struggles, he says, from from. Um, the movie business, you know, against his ideas. No, we don't want that, you know, and he would go, no, it needs to go in there. I want this, you know, he really had to fight and struggle to get certain results in the movies or to get certain scenes in there that he really wanted to get in there. Um, so that really brought a lot of stress. But like I said, I mean, when he started dancing, I could feel um, like I was invincible. Like there was nothing touch me or hurt me it almost felt like I was dancing on the stars somewhere up in this in this in the heavens and I was just doing my thing and then when the music stopped it, you kind of I kind of got back sucked into this body and go oh wait we're still here <laughs> you know so he really um, elevated himself vibrationally every time he he danced he he would become um uh, in a way, almost separated from his body, um, because it really brought him that kind of joy that it raises his frequency at such a high level that you know he almost, <laughs> if he would, he would have just let go by uh, gravity and shoot out there, <laughs> became that star he wanted to be. <laughs> Uh, he says, you know, but that was a really incre incredible feeling. And that is something that as Adam, I had not experienced that feeling of complete joy and balance and being one with the universe at that moment um, was really, it was incredible. So, Thank you for giving my son that yeah. opportunity. He's going, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that noise? I Did I, I hear a noise? noise? 
here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I just okay. Well, let's just say the fact the if you can hear anything besides the noise, I'm surprised oh. because the gardener is at the window with his blower and oh. the dog is barking his head off. And in spite of all that, oh, Adam has frozen my face. Aha. Tiffany showed me how to fix that. Watch this. Oh. <laughs> You can't do that anymore, Adam. <laughs> he figured it out. Um, Adam is just saying, you know, feeling such exhilaration, mm -hmm. you're doing something that you love is the best feeling ever. Um, I felt that when I was writing. Um, you know, and in that aspect, um, me and Gene get along real well because he loves writing poetry. Oh, it's so you know we get along and, and we try and, and like um, bounce off of one another, trying to make new songs and new lyrics and things like that. Oh, so. that is so amazing! So, Gene, what do you think of my boy? Oh, he's saying he's incredible. He's incredible. So, um, he is also a very smart young man. <laughs> he says he had a really um, keen eye on what was going on in his world, in his surroundings, but he had a really hard time placing it, um, making peace with what he saw. And, and that was, um, yeah. that was hard for him. When I went into his body and when he shared his, <laughs> his life with me a little bit, um, I didn't see the whole thing. He says, I just saw a little bit of it. Um, but I did feel that, um, the passion and the love was always there that never went away that never um it never disappeared although he really felt um that not a lot of people understood him no he felt misunderstood he felt like you know am i just weird or do people just really don't get me <laughs> Um, people don't and, try and to understand each other do they they don't try that hard no and he's saying you know and, and that's also why he felt alone at times because there is no understanding or people don't even try um, if you're not thinking the way I think you know you're being rejected right uh, and that's the mentality nowadays and that's what needs to change and he's saying you know yeah. uh, dancing can bring people together so even if you don't know a person and you see that this person needs some loving, you know, just ask them for a dance and they will <laughs> instantly pop up and go, oh, my God, yes. You know, you will just you will have given them an energy boost. You will have given them some love. Um, and and um, if the whole world would just dance with one another, we wouldn't have all these wars and all these threats. <laughs> Have a dance off. We need to get the leaders of these countries to do a dance off. I think we should, you know. <laughs> That'd be funny. Adam's going, you know, I can just see Trump, uh, you know, and the Korean dude. He calls That's him the Korean exactly dude. That's exactly right. And just go, you know, have a dance battle. That would, and, and then we choose who wins. <laughs> It would be so much cooler than threatening with weapons, he says. <laughs> yes, we need a dance-off between Kim Jong-un, or however you say his name, and Donald Trump. Donald Trump. I think we should. I think we should We should start a petition, Adam says. Who? Who's for it? <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. I can just see him go. He's just showing me how it would look like. <laughs> Because Donald Trump is just kind of higher than, than Kim is, and he they're just kind of, like, shaking. I don't know. He's just showing me something that's really weird to look at. <laughs> I would expect nothing else from Adam. <laughs> He's like, we'll just give him some... some uh... What? Abba? He's, I don't know what he's talking about, Abba. Abba. It, it's, a, it's like a band. It is. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Just going dancing queen or something. Dancing queen, yes, yes. Oh my God! Put Trump in drag, dancing queen. I love it. <laughs> He's just kind of showing me like disco and you know how they used to do it. He says um, 
um, how they used to they used to have like dance offs, you know? Yeah. Um, and saying that would be so much fun to see. I think we should do all politicians, you know, and then yeah. one against another. That's and right. whoever. That's <laughs> right. And the best dancer rules the world. There you go. The best <laughs> dancer gets to make the decisions. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> well, that that'll be interesting. <laughs> You know, somehow I think people aren't going to listen to us and just change the way we do things in the world. You know, I think they're going to keep doing them the way they're doing them in spite of the fact we have this great idea that they should do a dance off. Go I figure, know. they're not going to listen. No, but you know, we can, we can make it real in our minds and who knows, you know, we're Absolutely. very powerful So who knows? We might just see that dance off. That would be yeah. amazing. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much, Mr. Kelly, for coming through and spending time with us. You're very welcome. You could call me Eugene, he says. Eugene. Okay. Thank you, Eugene, for coming through today. We've been getting some requests to invite Mr. Hafner to come through. Somebody um, mentioned recently that he had purchased the plot next to Marilyn Monroe. So I'd like to ask girlfriend my new best friend, Marilyn, if she would like to come back with us next week um, and invite Mr. Hefner to come forward if he's interested. Oh, she's saying, I'd love to, honey. Aww. Count me in, count me in, she says. She's so sweet. She's adorable. So is Half ready to come come and speak with us or is he busy transitioning? Okay, <laughs> well, if Hugh's energy is around, if, can we just ask him, would you like to come through with me next week with Marilyn Monroe? He says, I'd love to, but if only if I can bring more beautiful women. You can bring whoever you'd like, sir. <laughs> and he said, I, I'm surrounded by beauty, he says, so why not bring a few women in? Just that, to keep me company, he You says. know what? That sounds amazing. So next week, we're going to check in and see how Hef is doing over there on the other side. He's probably busy meeting all of the best-looking women in heaven. <laughs> Adam is going, that's my man right there. Is he really? <laughs> that's the dude I need to hang out with. <laughs> well, Mama's going to arrange it with your friend Marilyn. <laughs> He's saying he's always surrounded by beauty. So, you know, what could go wrong? That's right. That sounds wonderful. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you, everybody, for watching today. Thank you, Emma. We'll see everybody next time. Bye. Love, love you, Adam. I love you too, Mom. I love everyone.